as well as the money changers seated there. He may have been that the coins were supposed to pull out of the temple area of the sheep and oxen and spilled the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house will consume me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, this temple has been under the construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that, this, that he had said this, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, Many began to believe in his name when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all. He did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. I have um, many uh, favorite quotes uh, from the late Pope St. John Paul II. Uh, one of them that I kind of cherish, I actually heard in person. I was present uh, more than 20 years ago, year 2000, at World Youth Day in Rome. And on the vigil, the, night, the, la the last night there before the final mass, um, Pope St. John Paul II spoke these words to a crowd of about two million young people. This is what he said. It is Jesus, in fact, that you seek when you dream of happiness. He is waiting for you when nothing else satisfies you. He is the beauty in which you are so, to which you are so attracted. It is he who provokes you with, those, with the thirst for fullness that will not let you settle for compromise. It is he who urges you to shed the masks of a false life. It is he who reads in your hearts your most genuine choices, the choices that others try to stifle. It is Jesus who stirs in you the desire to do something great with your lives, the will to follow an ideal, the refusal to allow yourselves to be grounded down by mediocrity the courage to commit yourselves humbly and patiently to improving yourselves and society, making the world more human and more fraternal. It is Jesus who we focus on in the readings for today's Mass as we journey th through Lent. The first reading tells us from the Old Testament, uh, the Ten Commandments. We know that even though some people could look at them as kind of onerous, burdensome rules, when the people of the Old Testament they received them, they were grateful because they served as gifts, as guides that they had, that the other nations didn't have, guides to know what is good and what is bad. These commandments are, are really uh, perpetual. They last. They were not abolished because we're bound to obey them. And... Um, they give us also, as ourselves, guides. You know, if we cross these lines, we know we've drifted away from God. But the New Testament goes beyond the Old Testament, and that's really uh, signified by what happens in the Gospel. Uh, Jesus goes into the temple and drives away the money changers. And one of the motives for that, obviously, is because they're abusing the temple. But uh, it's even more. It's because he speaks later on about the temple of his body. Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. They think at first that he's speaking literally about the building in front of them. But he's speaking about himself as the temple of the new covenant, the New Testament. Because really, our... Uh, life as Christians goes beyond 
just obeying the Ten Commandments, it means allegiance, faithfulness to Jesus, our Savior, because he is the one who teaches us love, and when we unite ourselves to him, we unite ourselves uh, to his death and resurrection. We become part of his body through baptism, and every time we receive him in Holy Communion, we are more closely united to him in his death and resurrection. That's what St. Paul speaks about in the second reading when he talks about preaching Jesus and him crucified. When we follow Jesus, we don't, as he said, we, we try to obey, obviously, the Ten Commandments, but go beyond that toward love of neighbor and love of enemies. That's how we uh, pick up the cross of Jesus, to do the difficult thing and to get to ask for that strength, to love even our enemies. Um, that's uh, to be a disciple of Jesus. And the whole purpose of Lent is to, by, you know, our works of penance, as the opening prayer told us, draw closer to Jesus every year we pass through Lent. So it is him we focus on in this season of Lent. Uh, we become his more faithful disciples. Pope John Paul II, that same night, and he concludes his words like this. By saying yes to Christ, you say yes to all your noblest ideals. I pray that it will reign in your hearts and in all of humanity. Have no fear of entrusting yourselves to him. He will guide you. He will grant you the strength to follow him every day and in every situation. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our prayers before our mighty Father. That those who lead the church exemplify Christian simplicity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments and corporations commit themselves to justice for the poor and fair treatment for the vulnerable. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who suffer wars, destruction, especially re religious conflicts, enjoy prompt <coughs> and lasting peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That elect catechumens and candidates learn to love God's laws. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly deepen their faith through service to the poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, 
and for all whom have asked for our prayers. We pray for the repose of the soul of Angel Rodriguez, Manuel Zamara, Lizette Caez, Sonia Diaz, Hector Negron, and for the personal intentions of Carmen Escalin and Angel Lopez. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <coughs> we ask these things and all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, Open My Eyes. And the first shall be last, and our eyes are open. We'll hear like never before, and we'll speak in new ways, and we'll see God's face in places we've never Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end to be acclaimed. Hosanna 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself for your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere no. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui toles peccata mundi, dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter to my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed.
the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Please join in singing our communion hymn to you, O Lord.
Let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Please be seated for some announcements. Good evening. Father. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I thank the Lord. <laughs> um, and also thank you so many. Um, just really felt incredible support in your prayers over the last couple weeks. And I personally just want to say thank you. Um, I also want to thank you for all of the soup and tea and plates of food that made their way into the rectory over the last eight days. No, uh, I've really been overwhelmed with, uh, with the support. So, and I thank God. I really do, do um, I really believe I got like strength from the prayers. I uh, started feeling better last week, you know, um, on Sunday and just been better pretty much every day. So I just wanted to give a little update because I know many people were asking. And, and, um, and so um, thank God yesterday I was able to uh, finish the time of quarantine and I got a negative test and everything. Thanks God, all is good. Yeah, thank you. And, and as appreciative as I am for that, I do um, also want to um, invite prayers because, you know, um, the news came to me of other people in our parish who are going through that struggle um, currently. And so just I'm keeping, I'm personally, you know, keeping people in prayer. But if I can invite us, even before I go through what I want, I need to go through tonight, to maybe just offer one Hail Mary personally for me in Thanksgiving, but also there, there are a handful of other people within our own parish that, um, and a couple, a couple struggling and really need our support. So if you just join me, I'll just ask our Lord to give strength and support to all those that um, within our parish and also within the network of friends and family um, of parishioners that have COVID or other sicknesses that need strength and healing graces. And we can say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So thank you for that. And, you know, before getting to the Cardinal's Appeal, I just want to offer a couple um, other thoughts. One is um, to publicly thank Father Nick Pergini 
for really, uh, he was kind of a workhorse. He was doing everything, <laughs> uh, and literally all the masses. Uh, Bishop um, was also quarantining, uh, for we had some contact at a dinner uh, before I became positive. And so um, Father Nick, um, and just for those that are watching at home as well, was taking care of really all the masses, uh, except, of course, last weekend we had some um, guest priests come in to help out. So I want to thank him for his sacrifice and his presence. I also want to um, thank Bishop. Um, he is going to have a little temporary. Um, he's being asked to be the temporary administrator of Our Lady of Angels Parish also here in the Bronx. So I know personally um, it's temporary, but we're going to miss him for his time with us. He's uh, been such a great support to Father Higgins and myself and Father Virginia in this time. Um, so we, you won't see him at the Masses in the month of March, and we're not exactly sure at what point he'll be replacing. He's taking um, Bishop Walsh, who was the admin, temporary administrator over there, um, is recovering from a surgery. So Bishop Byrne, who's the vicar of the Bronx, will spend time over there at Lady of Angels. So we'll miss him, and we'll look forward to his return. Thank you, Bishop. Yeah. So this weekend, as um, was announced last weekend, is our in pew uh, appeal for the Cardinals appeal. For those that have been coming on you know, regular basis, you know you've probably been through this before. <laughs> so it's my first time doing it because usually Father Higgins is the one or the pastor. And so I just um, want to offer a few words and then we'll go through the little time of uh, filling out the card um, one way or the other and, and then we'll, we'll collect those as well. So just... A few words, really, from uh, the, the office of the Cardinal's Appeals asks us to just share with you that over the past several months, our parishes have come together to serve the needs of the community by participating in the Cardinal's Annual Stewardship Appeal. And it's really the lifeblood of our diocese uh, to the work and of our parishes and the, parish the parishioners that we serve. So giving to the appeal allows us to care for the most needy within the diocese. We have um, we know Catholic Charities, which is a recipient of the Cardinal's Appeal, um, does a lot of work for the needy, also to educate our seminarians, to form young people in youth ministries, to help the retired clergy, and to support our most vulnerable parishes in the diocese. In fact, almost 50% of the funds raised goes back into our parishes throughout the diocese and ministries. So it is in this light of self-sacrifice and love of neighbor that I appeal to you once again for your generosity in contributing to the Cardinal's Annual Stewardship Appeal. If you can believe it, last year alone we served over a million meals in all three boroughs of the Archdiocese of New York. And Catholic Charities provides 151,000 New Yorkers with food and shelter in 2020. So the reality is that the demand has only increased during this last year because of COVID and other factors and will continue to remain present for the foreseeable future. So thank you for supporting our friends and neighbors and for considering this gift today. The, for those of you who have already issued a gift, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for your early support. And so at this point, we want to um, let you know that we have placed in the pews those, those envelopes, and maybe you received one on the way in, or if you have a, a pen, there's also some uh, little cards where some people have those QRC codes that you can scan with your, your phone. So I'm asked at this point to actually give us some time, a, few, a couple minutes, to, um, to actually fill that out. Now, this is a pledge, and as you know, um, you don't have to give all at once or even this night, although if some people want to. Some people received a letter in the mail and may have already given in that way, and so we thank you for that. So the, the diocese is asking that one way or another, whether you you're going to give now or whether you're going to give later, whether you've already given, that we just take a couple minutes now and actually fill out <laughs> the pledge card. Um, and, and you'll see everything is self-explanatory there. I know um, some of our, our ushers have pencils. If for those that didn't have any, you feel free to raise your hand if you still need a pencil. I'm actually going to um, kind of join you in this. I have a pen, and um, they've asked us also to do our pledge so I'll do that with you, just so we can take some time. I'm going to ask if Dave Lance might just provide a little background music okay. to, uh, as we go through that. You'll see that there's an opportunity to place your amount of your pledge for the appeal. Um, if you want to include something today, you can. 
Um, there's also different ways of paying, you know, whether it's a credit card or um, if you want to do a check or if you want to actually um, pay with cash. And then there's the, the section in which you actually fill out your name and address and um, all the rest of the information. So we'll take a couple min minutes to do that now and then the ushers will be ready to collect. You'll also see these cards that some of you have, which are like a business card. And it has, you know, if anybody's been out to a restaurant since COVID, you know that they have those QRC codes that you just put your phone over <laughs> and it scans it. So there's an option to just fill it out on your phone if that's your preference, not only for the Cardinal's appeal, but also for the WeShare. So um, feel free if you prefer to use that method. Um, Audi has some of those cards to hand out. So with that, I'll ask Dave to just maybe play a little music. I'm going to fill out my card as well, and we'll take a couple minutes to do that, and we'll have the ushers come to help collect. this moment we would invite the um, ushers to come forward to, just to collect what has been filled out. If you haven't already done so, then we have the baskets.
If anybody still has any on your way out, feel free to drop in the back. So, so thank you for your patience with that. Um, and it does help the uh, diocese and especially those parishes most in need and those families most in need. So uh, time of Lent is time of giving. So we thank you for that, uh, your patience. Just uh, we're in the time as we head through March, we will have just an anticipation, um, the opportunity for a couple of the great feast days coming up. Uh, some of you have been preparing with the St. Joseph consecration, just an encouragement to continue. And we'll have a couple details next week, even if you haven't been doing the consecration um, of a special way this year, we want to celebrate St. Joseph in, in anticipation of his great feast day on March 19th. But more details will be coming um, up for that for next week. We have also um, at this Mass, um, we thank you for, for all those that have been sacrificing and, and giving your time. We're, if anybody would like to serve as an usher for this Mass, we're always wanting to expand our, our team of hospitality and ushers. So feel free to talk to Cynthia or Aurea afterward if you're interested in serving as an usher at the 5 o'clock Mass. Please stand for the final blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray the hearts of your faithful and your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against, against the wickedness, wickedness and snares of the devil. devil. May, May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. pray. And do and thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, host by the power of God, God cast into hell Satan, Satan and all the evil, evil spirits, spirits who roam about the world, world seeking the boon of souls. of souls. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our final hymn, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.